then this was something for Spider-Man. We did, uh, it was a last minute thing. They wanted um, this design of this little mut mutated rat thing. And we did the design, did the designs in like a day. They got signed off on and then they changed the characters. So we never got to finish our maquettes, but recently we decided, let's put these things out. Um, and this is, you can just kind of go through these little, but just to show some details some some of the keys that we kind of put together for this stuff. Um, you can look at the textures that we had yeah. coming through. I mean, it's pretty much you, everything. Is, yeah. So that, this is what makes me laugh all the time. And yeah, I started going to manufacturing conferences and things like that because we use production big equipment. And I'm trying to tell them the software sets that we use and they're looking at me like I'm crazy. They don't want to talk about it. And everyone, you know, and I love this, the program, Materialized Magic. It's a great program. It's a very expensive program. And they're trying to sell me on their texturing and on their texturing. This is what you can do with the texturing on our program. And I'm just like, well, that's what I can do for about $600. <laughs> you know, exactly. and they can't even, their, their texturing does not even equate to what you're seeing on these screens here. And we can pose that thing and do concept art off that thing and do whatever we want to do off of that $600. Funny, program, yeah, exactly. program. What you, what, really what you can do with ZBrush that people aren't even aware of that you can do. This doesn't Some more examples, same thing. I mean, the textures that are in these pieces are amazing. Is that from Bakebot? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Yes. Yes, yes it, it is. is. Go buy one now. It's a special MakerBot, and I happen to have it in my car <laughs> if you'd like to purchase one. Don't open the box until I've given it. <clears throat> But so this is a great piece too here that Ian has. This 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 one speaks to when we were talking about scale yeah. earlier and how things translate across scale. Um, this is something that Ian did, and and so we have like you know the final signed off model right there, pose model that we're going to do a maquette off of uh, based on. There we go. Yeah. So it's like this as we're working on it, we're trying to figure out his likeness to the actor. We're trying to figure out the scale of the scales. We're trying to figure out all this stuff. Every couple of days, we were growing out another head, very small. And then once those got to a better point, we went to this next size, which is about, yeah. About here. Yeah. But we also, they wanted a one-to-one -one version of this guy who is gigantic. He's Hulk the size, size of the Hulk. Yeah. yeah. So if you go to the next one. That's an that's, SLA print. And again, we had to push that detail to a point that it looked so ugly. And we, not choke the machine. Yep. Because now we're going out of house for SLA, which is, you know, <clears throat> early 90s technology for the machine that we use for this project. And if anyone's familiar with QuickCast, it's basically a very economical way to do investment casting type prints to be burned out. We use it, we have a secret sauce that we do for using it in our shop. So after going back and forth with some detail tests, that's coming out of an SLA printer that's probably from about 1996, 1998. And uh, so- pieces is that? That's one piece. That's one piece. It's a mammoth machine. Yeah, so that's why it's a little bit different equipment than you see here on the convention floor, but this is where it all started from, these technologies, and these are the ones that we embrace, and this is what allows us to do what we do today. How long was the print? Uh, we got that back. We, we try to send stuff like that out on, like, a Friday, and we'll have that back in hands on Monday. Now, it's not uncommon for getting pieces close to that size within 24 hours back. It's a down and dirty method. It's a very fast, and you lose some detail on it. But we it's my out it's ways. actually my favorite of the of the technologies because form matters yeah. more to those machines, and detail seems to matter on the small machines you're dealing with. These you know form form always matters, no matter what you're doing. But people always obsess about detail, and that was one of the reasons I wanted to get a MakerBot because I wanted to form stop first. focusing on the detail, start focusing on the form. And exactly. these machines, they'll let you know really quickly whether you got it right or you got it wrong. So, and, yeah. and I love them for yeah. that. And I think we got it right because she was the final. Yeah. That's, that's that one-to-one uh, one scale. Yeah, that thing is, what is that? That's actually, that's the half-scale maquette. That thing was three and a half feet, something like that, four feet. Yeah. Um, that is an, actually a mixture because the head was grown on Arm. The, uh, that was grown the on the Eden 260. The body was grown out, was the, uh, was sent out, and then the hands, I think, were grown in-house in as house, well. Yeah. So we break down a character to take advantage of what we have in-house, what we can get in people's hands, and then take it out from there. And then here's some... Then you got we, One of the great things, too, on this project was, like, I was doing my color samples digitally, and that's fine, and it's cool, and, you know, they can look at it and go, that's neat, but I'm painting it. You know, it's not real. How does that photograph under different lighting? Am I going to paint it every time? It doesn't really give directors the information they need. Uh, our team there, I think Trevor was the main yeah, guy Trevor. on that. 
uh, Trevor did first from the little, little baby ones that we did internally that then suddenly became the most valuable things. He was doing all these different color combos based on some of the original stuff I did and then just going off on his own world. And then when we did the full scale ones, he was also able to do um, matching all of those different uh, color samples there, different eyeballs you could pop in and pop out. Um, but you know, it all started from a little digital model. They make you dance. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. I know we're running out of time here, right? Yeah, okay. okay. So this we'll, mother. Cruise through. we'll just go through these maquettes because there's something pretty special in here that I want to show you guys too. This is some more of our maquette style work like we were no. showing you earlier. ZBrush to uh, real world. Can then... you say uh, Solid Concepts? Out in Valencia. And this is, then we go to foam milling for certain types of things. We weigh all technologies and then actually making suits and fitting them on actors and actresses. But the one thing that, that I think is really, really cool is, and this is, once again, about a year and a half before Cowboys and Aliens came out, was Ian's designing the, the creature, the hero creature, and it has these crazy detailed teeth in the mouth and things like that, and it's on a full animatronic head. And they were having a problem with the upper and lower teeth in this animatronic head, A, because of the force that the head was going to be chomping in and, and moving its mouth up and down, it would just shatter a 3D printed part if it was in there. And B, there, there was so much detail in these teeth that there'd be no way for them to cast these things up in the mold shop. And then the other part of the equation was they were gonna have a child's arm inside of the animatronic head doing something. And we didn't know what to do. And at the time, I was do a lot of things with object before it turned Stratasys, working with R&D. And they gave us a beta resin to start plessing around with some rubber-like materials. Everyone's talking flexible these days, but we're talking flexible four or five years ago now. So I took Ian's design and prepped it to print on a 260 in a Tango material, early on Tango, which had a yellowish uh, hue to it that we had to figure out how to wash that yellow out and see if we can paint and finish on top of. So that's a fully flexible part that's sitting there. So we made a lower and an upper. So once Ian's design was approved, we printed sure. that out and we handed it over to an artist, his name is Christopher Swift, who actually took it to this level with different inks and dye ink techniques and stuff like that. Now keep in mind, this is a flexible part. This is not a rigid part. So what were we gonna do with this? Well, it gets really cool because we're taking an RP part and putting it inside of some hero animatronic heads that actually function. To this day, those teeth are still on that alien head and they're still being used. And those are right off of a printer. So, and then once we have the skin on top of it, which we also printed that head. <laughs> yep. That head was all done in rigid four, materials four parts, to be cast think, up yeah. in silicone on our other printers. But so the source of these awesome characters comes from these guys digitally, mm -hmm. then to me, and then come out physically, and then, and then get to the traditionally other handled mm -hmm. by the other artists at the shop, which is a pr pretty cool process. And uh, we're able to now do things like work with the makeup department and over lunchtime print a part like this. This is like an hour print and we can print it in clear, right off the machine in clear. And then within a day, have some fun with it and do some, where is it, why is it? <coughs> and do some in-house testing with, will this actually work by embedding into traditional makeup appliances and then seeing it actually in the film, based off of our in-house testing and our in-house printing. And it took us two days to get to this spot to convince them to do it, which is pretty, pretty neat. And at that point, that's our presentation. So if anyone has any type of questions or anything.